Hi, this is Jay Davidson, and today I want to speak about a very special plant, and that's Acacia Confucia. Now, it's long been known that various specimens of the Acacia family contain DMT, and Acacia Confucia is no exception. Now, I will speak about the DMT containing attributes of the plant in a moment, but I'd first like to introduce the plant. Acacia Confucia is indigenous to Taiwan. Confucia. Confucius. So Acacia Confucia refers to the famous Chinese philosopher Confucius. The local name for the plant is Xiang Si Shu. The plant is used in Chinese medicine, though it's not very commonly used. So if you go to your average Chinese medicinal store, you may not find it. You would have to go to a Chinese herbalist, one of the supply shops that supplies the medicinal stores. They stock larger varieties of herbal plants. It was at such a store that I purchased this big bag of Acacia Confucia that I have before me over here. Now, in Chinese medicine, this is used as a blood cleanser, a detoxification agent, a liver tonic, um, and it's also used for its powerful antioxidant properties. You can see this red tannin-like substance over here that is full of antioxidants. So it has several uses. I've also read of it being used topically for um, bites, I guess. Though we don't really want to know only about its Chinese medicinal uses. We want to know about its DMT. This plant is a, an excellent source of DMT. It contains more than 1% DMT in its root bark. The root bark. The root bark is this outside layer that you can see over here. This is a cutting of roots and you can see right over here you can see there's this red area over here. That's the root bark. That's what you want to peel off. So you want to peel this outside layer off over here. I'm going to show you. As you can see I'm peeling it off. Off it comes. This. This is what contains the highest concentration of DMT, more than 1% DMT. So this would be an excellent plant to use for ayahuasca preparations should you want to use it for ayahuasca. Now I would like to tell you that I'm not encouraging anyone to use this plant for ayahuasca. Um, I don't recommend that this plant be used for anything other than its intended, excuse me, intended Chinese medicinal uses. Though if one wanted to make ayahuasca with this plant, one very well could, as it's such a strong source of DMT. Now, in the event that one did make ayahuasca with this plant, if one used this root bark over here, you can see I have several pieces of it, it's interesting how it kind of spirals like a coil of DNA. If one were to use this to make ayahuasca, 20 grams would be enough for a strong dose. Um, if one were doing it for the first time, 10 grams would be enough. If one were very experienced, one could work one's way up to as much as a hundred grams. But one would need to do that very cautiously, very slowly, um, respecting the process of ayahuasca. Though these cross sections of root over here also contain DMT. And if one were to use this for ayahuasca preparations, one could also do that. Though one would obviously have to use a lot more because these white sections over here contain less DMT than the, the red areas. Some sections of root bark are very red in the, in the center. I theorize that because the root bark is red, these red areas over here also contain uh, more DMT. Okay, one final note is the Aborigines of Taiwan and Ayahuasca. I have not seen any evidence that the Aborigines of Taiwan use Acacia Confucia for ayahuasca preparations. I have asked around, I've looked around, I've read around, and I found no evidence of Acacia Confucia being used by Taiwanese Aborigines. It would be amazing to find such information, it would be awesome to, to find out about other cultures using ayahuasca-like substances outside of South America and in Central America. But unfortunately, I've not seen any such evidence. Now that's pretty much everything I know about this wonderful plant, Acacia Confucia. And as I like to always say at the end of such videos, ayahuasca is a powerful spiritual medicine. It's not something to be toyed with. 
It's something to be respected. If one does not respect ayahuasca, one is very likely to receive a slap in the face. And when it comes to ayahuasca preparation, one always has to be very, very careful about, about doing it, about taking it. One has to know what one's doing. There are foods one has to avoid. There's a very delicate process that one should undertake and respect. And if you do that, ayahuasca can be one of the most beneficial things that you could do to yourself or, or take for yourself. Um, of course, if one were to make ayahuasca with the Keisha Confucia, one would need to combine it with a monoamine oxidase inhibitor such as Banisteriopsis carpi or Syrian brew. Now, I have read about somebody using Acacia Confucia without any MAOI and it being effective, though I've never done that myself and can't confirm that. That's anecdotal information. So, yes, that's everything I know about Acacia Confucia. I hope this video was informative to you. I do not suggest that one makes ayahuasca. This is for informational purposes only. Thank you very much. Goodbye.